So this definition is going to have a couple parts, and it's going to begin as such. A function f between a and b, and note I'm defining that entire thing, and the red I'm defining the entire thing that I'm going to have. Its, it's label is f, but a function doesn't just have its label f, it, it has the connotation of coming between the sets a and b. And then I'm going to claim that it is a relationship, a relation between a and b that has a few different properties. So the first thing I want to do in my process of trying to understand this is, is recall what we meant by relation. So if I want to look at this part, the relation between A and B, what did that mean? Well, a relation was going to be a subset, it was a subset of A cross B. So that's what we meant by a relationship, a subset of A cross B. And if we go back to our example of x squared and we had our graph of this function, it was this curve, this parabola, that lived in the Cartesian plane. And we saw before that the Cartesian plane was going to be r cross r. It was all different ordered pairs. So indeed, the graph of my function, which was that parabola, was not all possible pairs, but it was a subset of the entire real plane. So this is what we have. A function is a subset of a cross b. That's that's partly the case, but I've got two properties. So the first property is this. For every element x inside of the first set, inside of a, so that is, for every input value x, there is going to be an output value. There's going to be an element y, which lives in the, the, the output, the b's, such that x comma y, that ordered pair, is going to be an f. So, so what does this mean? For, for every input, there is some output that my function is going to be giving. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say here that for every input value that I might have, so for every input x, there is some output. There is some output y. Such that you have the property, this is one way that it might be written, it might be that the function of the input is going to be equal to the output. We might say f of x is equal to y. Or the other way to write it in our language is this x comma y is inside of my function. So I have sort of my formal definition, that's what my, my white is, and then what I've just written down here is how I want to translate that. So for every element, for every input, if you will, there is going to be this output that is, that is a member of this subset, that, that does have that pair, that the x, y is, is in your function, is in your Cartesian product A cross B. All right, and then the second property that I'm going to demand is this. It says, if you have one pairing, an input-output pairing, and then you have another input-output pairing, and you'll, you'll notice down here that, that this is going to have the same x as this one did, right? They've got the same x's, but they've got a difference in the second component. So you've got both xy and xz. Well, then it must be the case that those second components, these, these y and the z, that they truly are equal. And this is the analog of the vertical line test. It's that second property that we were demanding, which says that if you have one input, that's the x here, if you have one input, then there is only one possible output. And so in this case, if I, if I told you that I had two different ones that were both in this function, two different ordered pairs, then it must be that, that really they are the same one. Their first components are the same, and then it must also be the case that their second components are the same, because there really can only be one. That has now encapsulated our concept of a function. So this is a little bit of a tricky and technical definition, but it's important to be able to parse through these statements, which have been written in a very precise way, using our language of sets and relations and elements, and that we have this formal definition for a function. Okay, so let's go back to our example f of x equal to x squared and verify that this is the case. Well, number one, 
We've already talked about how the graph of f of x equal to x squared is a subset of the Cartesian plane. So that point is perfectly fine. And then for x squared, we know that for every input x, there is some output. It's, it's x squared, that number. For example, the input 2 goes to 4. And that, that has this relationship that the pair 2 4 is inside of my function. Or in other words, f of 2 is equal to 4. So it has this first property. And then indeed, we've already seen that the graph of x squared, it satisfies the vertical line test. So it has that property. If you have one input, there is only one output. So indeed, f of x equal to x squared is a function as we were expecting. And in fact, we came up with these properties so that it would be a function.